We've got the Refresh Kia Telluride and it gets some nice updates for 2023. This has been our favorite three row midsize SUV. Let's find out if it still is. I'm so glad this is a Telluride. I got extra Smart grab hug. handles. <laughs> Zach, please. It's all part of the shtick, Andrea. Yeah, I know. All right, so we're in the updated, the nicely updated mm -hmm. 2023 Telluride. What's under the hood? A 3.8 liter V6 with an eight speed automatic transmission, 291 horsepower, and 262 pound feet of torque. Standard all-wheel drive in Canada, but front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive options are available in the U.S. So this is what's called an Atkinson Cycle V6 engine. It works on a different cycle that's more fuel efficient and it's a high compression engine. A lot of tech under the hood. A lot of people who own the Telluride report that they get better fuel economy numbers than the official EPA numbers. All right, so this vehicle has been updated. More stuff. What are you mm -hmm. getting it? What are the key standard features? The base trim comes with a 12.3 inch touchscreen with navigation, wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a 4.2 inch driver display, wireless charger, eight passenger seating, eight way power driver seat, heated leather at front seats, a heated steering wheel, a single sunroof and a power lift gate. All these terrain control settings, what can we put it in? Gotta put it in S for subscribe. And if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop and then you can watch them. And we do this, the couple car review twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So make sure you like and subscribe. Most important is to hit the notification bell. Also follow on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to get a sneak peek behind the scenes. For me, it's motormouth underscore auto and the links are below the like button. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. There's actually quite a few changes for 2023. To the exterior, you get new headlights, fog lights, a new grille. To the rear, the signature LED taillights remain, but the LED layout has been revised and you get new wheel designs. So the big change is to the front, especially the daytime running lights. Mm -hmm. So the original Telluride had these amber collars around the headlamps that made up the daytime running lights. Now they've gone to these horizontal twin stripes on either side mm -hmm. that are not amber. And there's been a lot of people commenting when they saw this revealed that yeah. they missed that. I don't know if I miss the old amber collars. Well, I like the amber lights. I thought they looked pretty cool, but I'm okay with this new design as well. But you're right, Zach, like real mixed messages here. Mm -hmm. Either they say, thank goodness they're gone or, oh, I miss them. Okay, just think about this for a moment. Mm -hmm. This is a classic example of what Hyundai and Kia do. Yeah. They bring out a vehicle that absolutely shoots the lights out. When this Telluride hit the ground, it was just a monster. And just a few years later, they're already doing major changes yeah. to this. So the update is an evolution, and the outside, I think, is still very handsome. Yeah. And it's quite different from the Palisade as it looks more rugged. I agree with you. There's also two new trims, the X-Line and the X-Pro. We're driving the X-Line model. We've got black exterior accents, a black grille, black roof rails and black wheels. Now the X-Pro can tow 5,500 pounds and the X-Line and X-Pro models have greater ground clearance. So the regular Telluride models, eight inches and these two new trims, 8.4 inches. As I mentioned, just a few years out, they're already doing big things, especially on the inside. And it really revolves around this impressive looking screen cluster. Mm -hmm. It comes now standard with the 4.2 inch driver display, but just one up from the base model, you get this new 12.3 inch digital driver display that a lot of people were waiting for because the Palisade had it. And then you get the integrated screen to the right, which is standard now, right? 12.3 yep. inches? Yes. Like, we were we we're going to talk a, a bit about the pilot in a moment, but it comes with a seven inch. This is 12.3. Take mm -hmm. that on. <laughs> now, the X line and the X Pro models get this beautiful terracotta interior as an option if you like it. And the X Pro model also has the option of a sage green interior. 
I do like the grab handles. We mm -hmm. joked at the beginning about it, but um, it kind of reminds me of our Porsche Cayenne has that. Yeah. I like where the controls are for the heated and ventilated seats. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a real classic study in how to do a modern take. So you've got those fancy looking screens, yeah. yet still functional buttons, which I think is what, I, I think this is really what people want. Yeah, it's a practical interior, but it feels more upscale and luxurious. You also get a new steering wheel design for 2023 as well. So quite a few changes. What hasn't changed is the V6 engine. It's bigger than the competition at 3.8 liters. Yeah. So it gives you good torque and I like the drive of this. Yeah, me too. It's quite smooth to be honest with you. When you put it in sport mode, of course. Let's take it out of subscribe yeah. first, okay? <laughs> okay, here in sport. Everything really firms up in sport mode, yet the steering doesn't get too heavy. It still offers a comfortable drive. And what I like is the digital driver display. When you switch drive modes, everything lights up. Of course, sport is in red. And I think it looks really sharp. This is a very comfortable and quiet car to take yeah. on longer trips. This is a classic family long haul kind of vehicle. Yes. Everybody piles in and you're heading down the highway for a few hours. Everyone's going to be quiet and the ride is smooth. However, my backside <laughs> is detecting a fairly firm seat. How's yeah. it over there, Andrea? Yeah, it's feeling a little bit firm for me too. And when we drove the previous model, I never noticed that. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that it is a little bit more plush on the outgoing model. I did speak to a follower on Instagram who has the 2022 model. Keep in mind, he's coming from a CX-5, which we know the seats are quite firm there, but he finds the 2022 model to have very comfortable seats. And in two weeks time, we get the Hyundai Palisade. It'll be yeah. interesting to see if those seats are firm. Anyway, go in knowing that we think the seats are kind of hard. Mm -hmm. You check it out for yourself. You might have a little extra cushion. You might not notice. You might be just fine with it. So we went through all of the base model standard features and you get a lot. So if you feel comfortable just with the base model, you're going to get this at a pretty affordable price point for a three row non-luxury SUV. But you want to go one up from the base to get that 12 point three inch digital driver yeah, display. Yeah, and, and some extra features in Canada for an extra $5,000. These are the features that you get one up from the base model. You get the dual sunroof, a 12-way power driver's seat, driver's seat memory, power passenger seat, leather seats, ventilated front seats, and of course the 12.3-inch display that Zach mentioned and the Harman Kardon sound system. The SX Limited trim gets you the Napa leather seats, ventilated and heated second row seats, a digital rear view mirror, which is a first for Kia and new on this Telluride, a 10 inch head up display and ambient lighting. In the United States, if you go one up from the base model, that's the S trim. You get heated front seats, a power driver seat and wireless charger. If you go up to the EX trim, you get leather seats, a power passenger seat, ventilated front seat, sunroof, and a power tailgate. The SX trim gets the dual sunroof, driver's seat memory, the Harman Kardon sound system, and a surround view monitor. The SX X line is the first trim where you get the 12.3 inch screens. And the SX Prestige gets ventilated rear seats, heated steering wheel, Napa leather seats, and a head-up display. It's quite interesting in the United States, you gotta go way up in the mm -hmm. trims in order to get the 12.3 inch driver display in Canada, yeah. it's just one up from the base. Yeah, I mean, good value here. If you can afford that price point of around $55,000 Canadian, you're getting a lot for your money. Now, before we get into this space and the seats, we just want to talk about the price a little bit because they, it has gone up. This is an incredibly popular vehicle. Yeah. And I think Kia saw the opportunity to raise the price because the demand is so strong. Mm -hmm. When I drove this originally, Andrea, I think the top trim was 52 grand. Right. And yeah. now the one up from the base is 55 mm -hmm. and this top trim is like over 60. Yeah. So the prices have gone up. Yeah, you know, it still has a lower starting price than the Palisade. Um, so like I said, if you don't want to move up to those higher trims, the base model for under $50,000 Canadian gives you a lot of standard features, including a power tailgate. One of the biggest things about this vehicle is it is big. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest in this class, and you can see me getting in the rear seats. This is the captain chair version, and there is a lot of room to spread out. The seats, of course, slide fore and aft to get into the back. Front row legroom is great in the Telluride, but it's actually the Nissan Pathfinder that offers the most in this category. 
Second row legroom is one of the best in class. It's tied with the Palisade. Third row legroom at 31.4 inches is good, but falls short to the Volkswagen Atlas and Chevrolet Traverse. The Atlas offers the most at 33.7 inches. When you open up the cargo area, there is quite a bit of space even with the third row up. However, unlike the Palisade, the Telluride is not offered with a power third row folding seat. Cargo space behind the third row at 21 cubic feet is excellent. Only the Traverse offers more. Overall, cargo space is a winner, but not best in class. The Traverse and Atlas offer the most. we got some good questions here, mm. including a cheeky one. <laughs> Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. If a family of four wants an SUV, is the extra cost of the Telluride over a Sorento worth it? Hmm. The Sorento is a great option. Um, you know, the Sorento is a six to seven passenger SUV. So for a family of four, and if you want to keep your price down, I think the Sorento is a great option. In Canada, you know, the top Sorento trim is less than the base model Telluride. And the other thing is you can get a hybrid and a plug-in hybrid if that floats your boat yeah. if you want to average down your fuel costs that's all available on the sorento side this is just uh, the 3.8 v6 and that's it uh, but this is a much more substantive vehicle for sure way bigger way more room I would argue probably better resale down the road. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it has a crystal ball, but these are highly sought after. Yeah, the third row in the Telluride, an adult can comfortably sit in it for a short period of time. You know, I don't know if I'd want to be on a long trip, yep. but I think, you know, in the oh, yeah. city, going from A to B, no problem. Sorrento is a bit of a different story. Quite small and Just best for, for small kids. Just for kids. Mm -hmm. Still no top trim with a second row bench seat instead of the captain's chair. This is a pet peeve of ours <laughs> is you want all the toys, yeah. but you get rid of one seat. So maybe you want this as a minivan replacement with all the toys. Eight people yeah. not available with all the toys. You got to go down market uh, in order to get a bench seat. Why? I don't know why they do this. Yeah, it'd be nice to have the option. I agree with you. Put a bench seat option for all all trim. So if people want the extras and they want to carry eight passengers, they can. Here's the breakdown in Canada. The two base trims are eight passenger and then the rest of the trims are all seven passenger with captain's chairs. And in the U.S. it's a little bit different. The base trim is an eight passenger, move up one, seven, move up again, eight, and then the rest, all seven passenger. I don't get it. We put out a lot of content each week on the Motormouth YouTube channel, and it's super easy to find. All you do is go to the YouTube search bar and type in Motormouth, the name of the channel, then the brand you're looking for. In this case, it's Kia, and all our videos pop up. It's that easy. Still catching fire? Well, I would just like to point out that there isn't one Telluride that has caught fire. Yes, so what happened, there was a recall. It affected the first batch of Telluride and Palisade yeah. 20 to 22. There is a dealer, not a factory install, a dealer install wiring harness for the trailer hitch at the back that could melt and they're worried about fire, but there have been no fires. No. Nope. So there you go. And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? The Telluride is always being compared to the Palisade, and I think many people feel the Telluride is better. Does the refresh continue to keep the Telluride on top, or are other competitors like the new Pilot coming out with better options? So when the two vehicles came out, the Telluride had a distinct advantage because it came standard with the larger screen yeah. and a wireless charger and LED headlamps in the Canadian market were all standard equipment. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't the case with the Palisade, but the Palisade had a few tricks. It had the digital instrument cluster yeah. and the power third row seat. And some of these have sort of equalized out now, right? Yeah, for sure. And there are a few things that I like better about the Telluride. Don't get me wrong. I think that the Palisade is a great option as well. First off, they have a different exterior style and of course looks are subjective. So I prefer the look of the Telluride. It's a little bit more rugged looking. I also prefer a traditional shifter, which I get in the Telluride. The Palisade has a button shifter. And the other thing that this Telluride gets is power folding exterior mirrors. In the city, we park on the street and I really need that as our road is quite tight. Yeah. 
delivery trucks have taken off mirrors. Yeah. Not on any Kia products. <laughs> no. Actually, it happened to our Toyota Tacoma. Yeah. Someone clean took it, right? I had a Ford F-150 that they did that to. Yeah. So it does happen. For the new Honda Pilot, we don't have all the specs and what every trim comes with and what the pricing is going to be. We know that Honda has really raised their prices. But one thing that annoys me is that the base trim comes with a seven inch touchscreen. I mean, that is really chintzy for a pilot, a three row SUV when this comes with a 12.3 inch touchscreen. Come well, that's, on. That's the problem with the established Japanese players playing it safe yeah. and not making big jumps. And then you have the challengers, the Koreans really doing a lot of things outside the box. Yeah. It really draws a line between the two. And one thing that really impresses me about this Telluride is the maneuverability. We do a lot of city driving turning radius is excellent and the steering isn't too heavy so that makes maneuverability much better as well oh you brought up some of the competition so let's get into it for your consideration four vehicles for you to consider up first is the hyundai palisade with the same 3.8 liter v6 as the telluride 291 horsepower and a starting price of just over fifty and a half thousand dollars the toyota highlander with a new 2.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder replacing the old v6 it is 264 horsepower and a starting price of just over forty five and a half thousand dollars the volkswagen atlas comes with two engines a two liter ford turbo with 235 horsepower and a starting price of just under forty two thousand dollars and a 3.6 liter v6 with two 176 horsepower and a starting price just over forty nine and a half thousand dollars the all-new 2023 Honda Pilot with a three and a half liter v6 285 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque the price has not been announced so there are four SUVs for you to consider can this thing tow what is the fuel economy and more in our vital stats Let's start with pricing. We'll do Canada first and then move on to the U.S. The base trim starts at just under $50,000 and the top X-Pro is just under $63,000. In the U.S., the first all-wheel drive model is just under $37,000 and the top SX Prestige X-Pro is just under $53,000. Here's the fuel economy, 12.8 liters per 100 kilometer city, 9.8 on the highway. That's 18 miles per gallon city, 24 miles per gallon highway. The Telluride can tow 5,000 pounds, but the X-Pro models can tow 5,500 pounds. The warranty is five years, 100,000 kilometers, or 60,000 miles. Lightning round, two things we like, two things we like to see improve. I love the upscale feel of this Telluride. I think the looks are a home run. What I'd love to see, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, I'm really missing it. Another pillow for my backside, <laughs> please. <laughs> this Telluride checks all the boxes. If you're looking for a spacious three-row SUV, check this one out. A little more padding in the seats. This video is brought to you by CarCost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below.